guys, welcome back. In this lesson, I want to go over how you can edit families. The reason I want to discuss this is because as an experienced Revit user, I don't personally find that I ever create too many components. Most often, when someone needs to create a new component, they'll simply modify an existing component to get what they need. So the first thing I'm going to do for this is create just a quick wall. So I'm going to go to the Architecture tab, and I'm going to click the wall, and then I'm going to insert a door into this wall. Now the default door that we're going to select is just a single flush door. But let's say I want to make a small vision panel in it. If I want to do something like that, most of the time, rather than creating a door from scratch, I'm going to click on the Edit Family mode. By doing it this way, I know two things. First, this is a proper, functioning family. It's already been set up, and so I know it'll work. And second, I can always revert to an original. So if I don't like the changes that I've made, I've got a backup of it all ready to go. So now, in order to make this a little bit easier to see, I'll set my display to shaded, and now I'm going to create an opening in this door. To do that, I'm going to go to my views, I'm going to expand out the elevations, and I'm going to go to the front. Now that we're looking at our door from head on, we're going to add that hole. And to do that, we're going to use void forms. You have access to all different types of void forms, depending upon the specific shapes or movements you want. For my purposes, I'm just going to pick a simple void extrusion. I'm going to opt to pick my plane, so I can select the exact plane where I want to work. And then I'm going to take my rectangle tool and just create a little vision panel, a small thin rectangle right in the door. So when we hit the check mark, it looks pretty good. Let's go into 3D to confirm that. So in this case, it looks like it did in fact cut through our door. Sometimes though, your void form might miss your object. It might not cut through, leaving you with a void form floating out in the middle of nowhere. So if you have a problem like that, first try extending the void form so that it moves through the geometry. If that fails, you may have to use your join and cut options in your actual modify tools. So be aware that those are there, just in case you need to use them. As it stands right now though, it looks like our view hole was formed perfectly. Now I'm actually going to create a new extrusion and use that for the glass. So I'll go back to my front elevation, and I'll go to create and then select extrusion. I'll choose pick plane and pick the same plane as before, and then draw a new rectangle over the old. Now you can always lock this rectangle in if you want to by clicking those lock icons, or as we showed in the previous tutorial, you can parameterize it so it fits exactly where you need. Now before I hit the check mark, I don't want my glass to be a foot thick, so I'm going to change the extrusion end to a quarter of an inch, and then I'll go under material and I'll type in the name of the material I want, glass. I'll hit apply, and then I'll hit the check mark. Now if you go into 3D view, you can see that you have your glass layer exactly where you wanted it. Now you always have the ability to edit and move your glass object if you need to. All you have to do is select it and then alter its dimensions as you need, according to its start and end extrusion points. And again, you can do that by either dragging them with those little arrows that appear when you select the object, or through the properties panel. In this case, before I load this into the project, because unless you want to actually override all of the existing single flush doors in your project, I'm going to go to the start menu and I'm going to save this as a family. And I'm going to give this a unique name. I'll call it single flush with vision panel. Alrighty. I'll hit save, and now I can go up and load it into our project. I'll select Project 1, and then hit OK, and then I'll add the door into our wall. And when you place the door, one of the first things you'll notice is that we can actually see the vision panel. Since it's showing up where our door actually does not sit right now according to the floor plan, we'll need to adjust the visibility graphic settings. So I'll click on Edit Family while that door is selected. That'll load in that family, and I'll go to our Ground Floor Floor Plan view. And you'll see there that there's different lines and criteria that are already enabled in this family. So I'm going to select my vision panel, 
or that is the glass of it in this case, and I'm going to change my visibility graphics on it. So I'm going to change my settings so that whenever I'm looking at my door in a plan view, the view panel won't be present, but it will be there when we're looking at it from the front, back, or left and right. So once I've made those changes, if I load this family back into my project, then the view panel disappears in plan view because I disabled its visibility when in a cut. But if I go into my 3D view, then the two doors and the differences between them are visible. So now we can select whatever component we want in whatever size we want and still have the flexibility of the original single flush door. But now we can choose to include that same type of door with a panel. All right, that completes editing components that already exist. We'll see you in the next lesson.